wishing you how to shoot food on your phone like a pro, then stick around because this video has been made just for you. Welcome to The Chef Shots, the pro photographer's secrets to creating drool-worthy photos using only your cell phone. Hey everyone, I'm Lee Loftus. I'm a food and beverage photographer, and this channel is all about teaching you how to shoot food on your phone like a pro. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you subscribe over there so that you can get notified about our new videos that come out every single week. All right, so step number one is going to be to make sure that your lens is clean. We carry our phones around with us, we're walking around, we might set it down, we might even just like touch it with our hands. So if you've ever seen a photo that looks like this, that's because your lens gets dirty. It naturally gets maybe food, literally even fingerprints on it, and it takes you no more than two seconds to just look at your lens, go ahead and give it a wipe off with a towel or with a soft cloth. Um, you wanna make sure maybe it's not your apron. Those might be a little bit too tough, but that is step number one. So simple, just clean your lens. All right, you guys, step number two is to make sure that you have your camera's grid turned on. So if you don't have your grid turned on, you're gonna go into your settings and you're gonna scroll down until you get to your camera. And then I advise turning, that turned it off. When it's green, it's turned on. And then when you go to your camera, you see these lines. For the Android device, once you're in your actual camera app itself, then your menu, which is either upper right or upper left, to open your camera menu, you can go in there and then about halfway down, you'll see the option to turn on your grid. So that's step number two, to make sure your camera's grid is turned on. Step number three is to make sure that you've moved yourself and your subject matter into a nice natural light setting. And if you missed the two videos that came before this all about building your own light box and whether or not you should buy that light box everyone talks about, um, then go ahead and follow the link below or above that I have ready for you because it will make or break every single photo you take so you don't wanna miss those. Like I said, follow them after this. So step number three is move yourself into nice natural lighting. I also want to mention here not to ever use your flash because when you're using your flash on food, you're shooting it straight onto the food or the cocktail. What it's going to do is it's going to wash out what's in front of it. And that's why I've taught everybody listening how to move yourself and position yourself in nice natural light and also tip from our uh, temperature video, turn off your overhead lights if you can. And again, if you missed that video, it will be linked below. So step number three is move yourself and your subject into nice natural lighting and make sure your overhead lights are turned off as well as your camera's flash. Step number four is going to be to be very, very thoughtful and be very intentional about which camera angle you use. So there are three primary camera angles to choose from whenever you're shooting. And the most common mistake I see cell phone photographers do is to pick up their phone, put their subject matter somewhere in front of them, and then just open their camera and snap a photo. And they don't give any thought at all to which camera angle they're choosing and why. So our three primary angles is we have lay flat or overhead, straight overhead, boom, right here, your subject's down below. Then we have somewhere between lay flat and straight on 90 degrees, 45 to 75, often referred to as the diner's view. And last but not least, we have our 90 degree straight on angle. Not one of them is right or wrong or better than the others, but what again, what is important is that you start to spend two seconds before you snap a photo to ask yourself and think about what is the best angle for the dish that I'm about to shoot and how can I show it in the best light? Let's use an example. So here I have some chips and dip. And in the image on the right, as you, this is how this would be served at the restaurant. And for the viewer, the, the restaurant diner, that's perfectly fine. But if you're gonna shoot that image, that doesn't tell the best story of the dish in front of me. The container for the dip itself is so tall and so deep that I can't even see what's in there. I, I don't actually really know as a viewer of the image. While when you move to the image on the left, I took a few seconds, I restyled what I had in front of me and chose to shoot from our overhead lay flat angle because it was a better angle for all of the ingredients in my shot. And there's nothing to say that you can't style it differently than how you would serve it. You likely don't wanna include some random ingredients that don't fit, 
but it's okay to style it a little bit differently because the whole point is to make your viewer hungry, to make them want to eat what's in front of them. And as very easily you can tell the image on the right doesn't do that while the image on the left does a much better job of telling that full story of the dish, okay? Next, let's move into that 45 to 75 degree angle. And I know I harped on it for a second at the beginning saying that most people just grab their phone and don't give any thought to it. That doesn't mean that this angle isn't a good angle. It just means that too often, by default, people are shooting in that angle as opposed to being thoughtful about it. So let's go ahead and look at the image on the right, a bowl of noodles and Normally, when you're shooting a bowl, nine times out of 10, you're gonna wanna shoot a lay flat because you need to see down into what's going on in the bowl itself. Any ideas as to why I chose that 75-45 diner's view angle? I chose it because that bowl itself was so beautiful. We picked the bowl to help bring out the colors and the vibrancy of our dish itself. And if I shot it directly overhead, you would lose all those details that are going on on the inside rim of that bowl, which also creates really great dynamic interest and color contrast. And I just would have lost all of that if I didn't shoot it in between that 45 to 75 angle. So that's why I chose that one. Let's move on over to the lamp, leg of lamb shot. And as you all know, as chefs, a leg of lamb is huge. It is likely as big as this table in front of me. And it's really hard to get into an image, the leg of lamb itself. So what the chef and I chose to do was, let's do a plating of how you would serve this and put the leg of lamb in the background. And again, I'll shoot it on that 45 to 75 degree angle so that you can see this is coming from the leg of lamb. This is what it was cooked with. So that's what we used to build our plate with. And this is how you could serve it. Um, if it was serving at my restaurant, this is what you could come try. And it just helps tell the story better. While again, if I had shot it overhead, it that leg of lamb would probably have had to been the only thing in the scene by itself because it's so big. So again, being mindful and being intentional about which angle we choose and why. Let's move on to our last example. And we're moving into the 90 degree straight on shot. And this is one of my favorite, they're all amazing, but this is one of my favorite shots to take because this is perfect for sandwiches, for cocktails, for pancakes, anything that is tall and all the details are on the front. And as you can see the image on the right, that sandwich, if I had shot that overhead, you wouldn't see that beautiful juicy egg running out the front. You wouldn't see the greens. You wouldn't see all of the layers. And that's what's important. That's what's gonna make the viewer hungry and want to come try this dish. Same with the chicharrones. All of the details are on the side. If I had shot that from overhead, it would look flat. You wouldn't see that crunchy texture and then that powdered flavor that they have on the outside there. All of that would be lost if I shot that on a different angle while choosing to shoot it on that 90 degree straight on made it feel like a really monumental strong dish as well as show all the beautiful details that that dish has to offer. All right, you guys, tip number five comes right after the camera angles because it is all about if you're shooting on your 90 degree or your 45 degree angle to physically position your subject matter a bit further away from the background. So let's look at these two images I have. The first image, I, I, this is what most cell phone photographers do, basically new photographers do out of the gate. They find their background and they put their subject matter right up against it. And what that does is it causes your subject to compete with the background. Like it's going to be almost as in focus as the subject matter itself. While if you choose to move your subject about two to three feet away or more, if you want, the further away you move from the background, the softer the focus will become. Therefore, the less distracting or less competitive the background will be with your main subject matter. So the tip number five is to be really intentional about your proximity of your subject to its background. About two to three feet away is a good rule of thumb. The further that you go, the more softer background will become, which is you're gonna be your best friend in your cell phone photography. Tip number six is to decide whether or not you're gonna include anything to support your hero dish. Props, other food elements, anything at all that's gonna tell your story or not. You might wanna use negative space, but again, be intentional. Every single thing I'm talking about is to have intention in your photography. 
All right, you guys, thank you so much. That is all that I have for you today. I hope that you learned a ton in, in part one of how to shoot food on your phone like a pro. Next week, I'll be back with some more tips for cell phone food photography. So like I said, be sure to subscribe if you're interested in that. Also, I wanna invite all of you, if you're seriously interested in upping your cell phone food photo game, then you should definitely check out our new course, The Chef Shots. It launched in December. It kicks things off with Phonetography 101, which is a really awesome four module part course that teaches you about your phone, teaches you all about lighting, teaches you composition, and then dives into editing. Again, all for your phone. And then we're adding new courses every month. It's really, really awesome. So like I said, if you're interested in upping your cell phone photo game, I would absolutely love to have you in the course with us. Or if you just wanna dip your toe in the water and learn a little bit more, we have a free resource library. So again, make sure to check that out in the link below. If you're practicing your new cell phone photo tips, be sure to tag us on Instagram at The Chef Shots. I absolutely would love to see your photos. I would love to see you improve and see what you've learned from these tips. And if you have any questions or just let me know in the comments how you like this video and how you like this series. Next week, I'll be going over part two of how to shoot food on your phone like a pro. So if you're interested in that, in that, be sure to tune in next week. And again, thank you for listening and I will see you guys soon.